Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to continue with the lymphatic system and talk about the structure and functions of the lymphatic vessels. And we'll be frequently referring back to this slide, which was in the previous video where we talked about lymph nodes. So what are lymphatic vessels? Lymphatic vessels are similar to arteries and veins, except for a couple things. Um, one, they do not transport blood, they transport lymph, and their function is in the movement of excess fluid back up into the venous system. And they're actually going to dump that fluid back into the venous system at a point near the heart, uh, which is actually what we talked about several videos ago. We talked about the thoracic duct and the right lymphatic duct. Okay. And this fluid that we're talking about being returned is excess fluid that's been filtrated out of the capillary beds but not reabsorbed. Okay? So remember what filtration is at the capillaries. Here's a capillary bed right here. Remember that at the arterial end of the capillaries, so this is on the right side of this picture, the hydrostatic blood pressure is greater than it is over here on the venous end of the capillary. And so what that results in is on the arterial end of the capillaries, we have filtration, which is the bulk flow of fluid and other particles, but really we're talking about the fluid, out of the arterial ends of the capillaries and into the interstitial area, also called the interstitium. Okay? And that's because the net pressure is going to drive fluid in that direction, from the blood into the interstitium. That's filtration. Okay? Now, on the venous end of the capillary bed, this is where reabsorption happens, and that's because the blood hydrostatic pressure on the venous end of the capillaries is lower than it is on the arterial end. And so on this side, you actually have fluid returning from the interstitium back into these capillaries, and of course, it goes back to the venous system. But this system of filtration on the arterial end and then reabsorption on the venous end, this is not 100% efficient. In fact, not all of the fluid that's uh, filtrated is reabsorbed directly into the venous end of the capillary. In fact, only about 85% of whatever's filtrated on this end is reabsorbed back into the capillaries on the venous end. The other 15% must be reabsorbed by lymphatic capillaries. And so what you see in this capillary bed, and we neglected this when we talked about the cardiovascular system, is you see these green vessels. These are lymphatic capillaries, and they're interspersed all around this capillary bed. And these lymphatic vessels are going to be involved in reabsorbing that excess fluid that's not reabsorbed, that 15% roughly. Okay. Um, also, notice that um, these lymphatic vessels, if these are present in the small intestine lining, these would actually be the lacteals you know, that actually are involved in absorbing lipids. But that's a different story. But in general, these lymphatic capillaries absorb that excess fluid. And their job is to transport this fluid ultimately into a lymphatic vessel. So these capillaries, these lymphatic capillaries that is, will converge at a lymphatic vessel and that's what we're going to look at in more detail on the next slide. I do want to mention this, that if there's for any reason a failure to really absorb enough of this fluid in the lymphatic capillaries, this will tend to cause a condition called edema. And so if you can't absorb this last 15% of fluid from the interstitium that's been filtrated, then that fluid accumulates in the interstitial area around here. And over time, you get more and more fluid buildup, and that fluid buildup is called edema. This is just a general term. As we'll see later on, there's actually other types of subtypes of edema. Okay. Let's look more closely at an actual lymphatic vessel. So what we can see here is we can sometimes have smaller lymphatic vessels that converge into a larger lymphatic vessel. But these arrows right here are to demonstrate that we have unidirectional flow of the fluid that's in this vessel, and this fluid is called lymph. Okay? So as we mentioned before, these lymphatic capillaries drain fluid that was filtered from the true capillaries into the interstitium. Okay? And these lymphatic capillaries converge into a pre-collecting vessel. This is actually a pre-collecting vessel right here, but it's going to be analogous in function to an actual lymphatic vessel. As I mentioned here, several pre-collecting vessels will then eventually converge with other nearby pre-collecting vessels, and this will form a true lymphatic vessel. But what I want you to notice about the whether it's a pre-collecting vessel or a lymphatic vessel is that they have valves. 
Okay? These valves are similar to what we see in the venous system, the veins. Okay? The valves are designed to prevent the backflow of fluid. Okay? So, in other words, lymphatic vessels are low pressure systems, just like veins. And so, if you didn't have these valves, any fluid that moves in this direction might have a tendency to just go backwards. So whenever this fluid moves up here and gets into this region right here, it can't move back because the fluid will actually close this valve and prevent it from going backwards. So these valves ensure unidirectional flow of lymph back to the venous circulation. Okay? The other thing that we also have in lymphatic vessels is there's actually smooth muscle in these walls. And the smooth muscle is going to perform something very similar to peristalsis, which is also going to help move this fluid back upward toward the heart. Now, remember that the lymphatic vessels ultimately are not returning fluid directly to the heart. They're really returning it to the thoracic duct and the right lymphatic duct, and so they're going into a, a couple veins, that is the uh, subclavian and internal jugular veins. But the point is, is that they're going to move this fluid unidirectionally toward those regions, and the backflow is prevented by these valves, and then also the smooth muscle in these walls of the lymphatic vessels are actually going to help move it. Okay? Now, having valves that prevent backflow is good, and having some smooth muscle in these walls that can contract and sort of do a peristalsis to move the fluid back up toward the heart, that's good and all, but it turns out that they're actually aided by the skeletal muscle pump. Okay. So the skeletal muscle pump, in the same way as helping the veins return blood to the heart, the skeletal muscle pump can also help lymphatic vessels, particularly in the legs, get that fluid and move it back up. And that's important because if this is a low pressure system, which it is, like veins, we don't have a significant pressure gradient that's forcing this fluid back up. Notice that if we're in the legs, we're having to fight gravity and get this fluid all the way back up here to a point close to the heart. Okay? So the valves help prevent backflow, and the smooth muscle in these walls can help a little bit, but the skeletal muscle pump, as with veins, is very important because as you contract muscles, then those muscles are going to sort of squeeze this fluid back up, and the backflow is prevented by these valves. This is why long-term chronic inactivity in a sedentary lifestyle has a tendency to promote edema. It's not the only factor. In fact, it's just a contributing factor. But long-term inactivity in a sedentary lifestyle can accelerate the, the development of edema because if you're not actually contracting your muscles, particularly in your lower extremities, it causes the increased likelihood of fluid not being able to be returned and then you're going to have fluid accumulation in the interstitium and therefore edema. Okay? So, hopefully this video gave you a good insight into the structure and function of lymphatic vessels. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.